Happy Christmas. Welcome to our service. Whether you're bleary eyed because you've been up since five o'clock this morning with excited children, or whether you've had the luxury of a long lie. It's Christmas Day, the day we celebrate the birth of our Saviour in Bethlehem. I know things will be a lot quieter today for most people, but we hope and pray that in this service, something of the joy and wonder of Christ's coming might just touch us all and bring the spirit of the Christ child into our living rooms. First thing we do today is to light our central candle in the Advent rings. The central candle stands for Jesus himself. It's going to be lit by the children of Relief Church and a member of Muir Church. Now, this is the last time that we'll be lighting these wreaths separately because the churches are to join together in 2021. And we'll look forward to that. And now we sing the carol that will start thousands, maybe millions of Christmas Day services right across the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. And our prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing Christmas day. Help us to remember the birth of Jesus and to know that when he came to earth, God came to be with us and you are with us today. So may we share in the joy of the angels, in the gladness of the shepherds and in the worship of the wise men as we all come to adore him today. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now here's a song to a very famous tune, one that the kids love. It's Gloria, Gloria to the tune Jingle Bells. It was written by a lady called Marjorie Wilson and it's sung by the Air Newton Wallace Town Praise Band.
And now we read the account of the birth of Jesus. This is from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 1, reading into Matthew chapter 2. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he'd called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out from you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And now, no Christmas Day service would be complete without the singing of Away in a Manger.
Boys and girls, this is Max. Max is a golden cocker spaniel and he's our pet. Though sometimes he's a wee bit of a pest and less of a pet. Max loves Christmas. Now the thing about Max and Christmas is that Max loves paper. So when a gift comes in to the house, he wants to chew all the paper. And he leaves a wee pile of papers on the floor. And that's a wee bit annoying. However, it's just like many people. We love what we would call the wrappings of Christmas. The tree, the card, the gifts, all the kind of decorations. But sometimes we forget that the gift of Christmas came wrapped in a baby in a manger. Christmas is all about Jesus. The other thing Max loves about Christmas is presents. He just loves presents, but he thinks they're always all for him. And that's a bit hard because he wants to grab every present that comes in. But actually, we've got Max a very good present that he will love, absolutely love. It's all things specially made for doggies. All of us love presents, and we expect to get good things, special treats from those that love us, really good things. But sometimes they're a wee bit greedy with our presents. I went to a boy's house once, and he had loads and loads of toys. And I thought we were just going to be have a great time sharing his toys. And as soon as I began touching his toys, he said, don't meddle, don't meddle. I had to put them down and leave them alone. Oh, I was astounded. God gives us presents so that we can share. And through sharing, we have a much better time than we'd, we'd otherwise. Sometimes we forget that. The other thing that Max loves about Christmas is parties. Now, we're not having a party here this year, sadly. But when we do have a party, and hopefully in the next few months, maybe it's celebrate Easter, then he will want to be the centre of attention. Whenever somebody comes into the house, we say, now, just ignore Max. But Max will not be ignored. No way. No, he wants to be petted. He wants all the attention. He, he wants to get attention from absolutely everybody. He's saying, me, me, me. I've got to get attention. Oh, that's a shame. He kind of ruins the party for some people, really, because he wants petted, always petted on the, patted on the head, and oh, all kinds of things. And he likes his tummy rubbed. Max is some, some kid. But you know, when God came to this earth in Jesus, he came to give us a party. He said he would send tidings of great joy to all the people. Parties are for everybody to enjoy. When we go to a party, it's not just for us. It's so that we can give joy to everybody. And in giving joy to everybody, our own joy is increased. God gave Jesus in joy that we might have joy at Christmas. And I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you won't have a dog like Max who rips all the paper and leaves it in wee piles on the floor. Ah, dear. Or a dog who's absolutely obsessed with presents and he must have his own. Well, he's got his own. And this is the best present for him or a dog that just won't leave people alone to be as parties. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. So thanks for listening, boys and girls. Well, wasn't that just a bit of fun? Now for the big folks. The story of Christmas in newspaper titles. I've done this sort of thing before several times, and amazingly, there's always been someone who's got exactly the right answer. What you need to do is to calculate the number of different newspaper titles that are mentioned. Now, just a warning, some are mentioned twice, but that doesn't count as two, it just counts as one. If you think you know how many, 
then please email muir, M-U-R-E, dot relief at gmail.com. Muir dot relief at gmail.com. And I'll announce the winner at a future service. It'll be certainly very interesting to see the answers. So now I'm going to read the story in newspaper headlines. This is a good news story. In times long ago, a girl called Mary heard a voice from an angel. This wasn't a guardian angel. This was a herald angel with a message that Mary would be the mother of God's son. Mary was engaged to Joseph and he wasn't too sure about this news. What would people be saying? Stories would be echoing around the neighborhood. It will be in the local chronicle. But he also heard a voice. An angel told him not to be afraid and to marry Mary. Caesar Augustus was emperor and tribune of the people. He ordered that all the citizens should return to their own town to be counted so that a record could be kept. This was before there was any mail service. It couldn't be done by post, no expressway. So Mary and Joseph had to make the long journey to the place where Joseph had been born. When they reached Bethlehem, there was no room. They checked through the Bethlehem advertiser. They didn't want anything much, just a standard room. But there was nothing that one innkeeper could offer. He could only offer a cave. But it would have to do. It was here that Mary gave birth to her son. They were all alone, quite independent. Meanwhile, some shepherds were spectators to a strange sight. An angel, a messenger from God, said, I bring you good news. A saviour has been born. He is Christ the Lord. You'll find him lying in a manger wrapped in cloth. Many angels appeared praising God. And when they'd left, the shepherds said, let's go. And they went and they found Mary and the Joseph and the baby. There were some wise men, some observers from the east, who had seen something unusual in the sky. Was it a comet? Was it Mercury? No, it was a special star. They knew this meant the arrival of a great and wondrous king. They went to see King Herod. He was the leader, and he wasn't happy that another king had been born. He said to them, when you find this king, return this way and tell me so that I too can go and worship him. The wise men followed the star, and they reached the place where Jesus was. They were couriers of gifts and gave to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, God warned them not to mirror their journey, and so they took a different route home and didn't go back to tell Herod. The news of that story from Bible times is not just a supplement, but good news for all the world, i.e. the mold, for all people today. Well, how did you get on? Let us pray. Loving God, giver of life and creator of love, we pray for those who have no gifts to open this Christmas, for parents who will struggle even to feed their children, for children who have little reason to smile. May we who celebrate Christmas become those who bring good news to them. We pray for those who do not look forward to this time of year because of family circumstances or difficult memories or loneliness. Lord Jesus, who came into our world, be close to them. May we who celebrate Christmas truly shine with your light to those on our own doorsteps. We thank you for the reminders of Christmas, for the truths that you've made yourself known at home amongst us, that we may call you Emmanuel, God with us. Therefore, keep us conscious of your loving and living presence and make us channels of your grace, not just at Christmas, but every day, may we and the church in which we worship become ever more truly God's gift to the world. For we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we join to sing one of the, the greatest and most popular hymns, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
before the benediction, can I wish you a day that will be touched by God's love, inspired by his hope, and filled with joy by the coming of the Spirit of Christ to you, wherever you are this Christmas day. And now the benediction. Let us go from here proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall never overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you all throughout this Christmas time and forevermore.